Welcome to this annotated anatomy video that's going to outline the scapulohumeral muscles. These are the muscles that run from the scapula to the humerus. So on the screen at the moment we have a diagram showing the posterior surface of both the scapula and the humerus. So just to go over some landmarks first of all, here we have the superior and inferior angles of the scapula. Here we have the medial border and here we have the lateral border which helps to form the glenoid cavity or the glenoid fossa. This is where the head of the humerus articulates to form the glenohumeral joint. Running across the posterior surface of the scapula we have the spine of the scapula which dilates laterally into the acromion. The spine helps to separate the posterior surface of the scapula into a supraspinous fossa and an infraspinous fossa. Here we have the shaft of the humerus, which forms the medial and the lateral epicondyles. And here we have the olecranon of the ulna. So let's start by detailing these muscles. The first muscle I want to describe is supraspinatus. This muscle runs from the supraspinous fossa, which is the space superior to the spine, to the greater tubercle of the humerus, which we can indicate here. So it runs approximately in this kind of direction. The muscle fibres actually run inferior to the chromium to, like I said, attach to the greater tubercle. So it kind of runs in this direction. So here we can see supraspinatus. Found inferior to the scapular spine, we have infraspinatus. Infraspinatus also runs towards the greater tubercle of the humerus, and it runs from the infraspinous fossa. So here we can draw infraspinatus running towards the greater tubercle, assuming this kind of position. So here we have infraspinatus. Inferior to infraspinatus, we have a further muscle that attaches to the greater tubercle, and this muscle is known as teres minor. So here we can draw in teres minor. So on this posterior surface of the scapula, we can see supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and teres minor. These three muscles, along with subscapularis, which we can see if we were to look on the anterior surface of the scapula within the subscapular fossa, form the rotator cuff muscles that pass around the glenoid cavity. They surround the joint capsule of the glenohumeral joint and hold the humeral head in the glenoid fossa. This helps to stabilize the joint. The fourth muscle that lies inferior to teres minor is teres major and this muscle isn't part of the rotator cuff as it actually attaches to the shaft of the humerus. It attaches to the medial lip of the intertubercular groove and this is located on the anterior surface of the humerus. So teres major actually passes to the anterior surface of the humerus so we can draw it in here. So here we have teres major. So let's quickly just go over these muscles once more. We have supraspinatus. This muscle is important in initiating abduction of the glenohumeral joint. We have infraspinatus, inferior to the spine, infraspinatus. Inferior to infraspinatus, we have teres minor, and here I'll just put MN for teres minor. Infraspinatus and teres minor are associated with laterally rotating the humerus. And then inferior to teres minor, we have teres major. And for major, I'll just put MA. Teres major is associated with medial rotation of the humerus. And remember, it does not form part of the rotator cuff. I also want to add on an important muscle that forms really the bulk of the shoulder and this is deltoid and I want to put in the posterior fibres of deltoid but to do that would actually cover and would interfere with these fibres and I don't want to do that I don't want to disturb the diagram we've got so far so I'll just draw in the attachment of deltoid which is coming from the spine and it heads laterally towards the acromion and I'll just draw it as if we've reflected it so here we can see we've got the cut surface of deltoid and here we can see its attachments running down to the deltoid tuberosity of the humerus. So here we've got deltoid muscle or specifically the posterior fibres of deltoid. And the reason I've put it in like this is important so we can highlight an important space created by these muscles which allows the auxiliary nerve to pass through. 
The auxiliary nerve is a nerve coming from the posterior cord of the brachial plexus and it actually supplies deltoid muscle with its motor innervation. The space that's created by these muscles is called the quadrangular space and to complete the quadrangular space we need to add in a further muscle and that muscle is known as the long head of triceps. Long head of triceps actually runs over teres major as it heads towards the infraglenoid tubercle and this kind of superior region on the lateral surface. So here we can draw in the long head of triceps. Triceps has three heads as its name suggests but I'll just draw in the long head here. So here we can have the long head LH, long head of triceps and here we can have the posterior fibres of deltoid. So here, now we've drawn in the long head of triceps, we can outline the quadrangular space. And I'll draw that in black. So here we have the quadrangular space. We can see that superiorly it's formed via teres minor, inferiorly it's formed via teres major, medially we have the long head of triceps, and laterally we have the surgical neck of the humerus. So let's go over those boundaries once more. Superiorly we have teres minor, inferiorly we have teres major, medially we have the long head of triceps, and laterally we have the surgical neck of the humerus, and this creates the quadrangular space. Like I said previously, passing through this space is an important nerve, and this is the auxiliary nerve which goes to supply the deltoid muscle, so we have the auxiliary nerve, This nerve is important as it innervates deltoid and as deltoid is involved in abducting the arm, taking over from supraspinatus after the first 15 degrees, an important test to examine the auxiliary nerve is by asking the patient to abduct their arm beyond 15 degrees. Also passing through the quadrangular space is the posterior circumflex artery which loops around the neck of the humerus. So also, running through the quadrangular space is the posterior circumflex artery. So here in this short video, we've detailed the scapulohumeral muscles, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, teres major, the long head of triceps, and posterior fibres of deltoid. We've highlighted the quadrangular space and its boundaries, and the two important structures which pass through it.